If you were trapped in a luxury high-rise apartment with no supplies, support, or means to escape, what would you do? This career criminal thought that he was in for the score of his dreams, but he had no idea that he was about to find himself trapped in a never-ending nightmare. I'm here to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to escape from the penthouse of horrors in Inside. <laughs> This art thief is about to realize why you should always have a plan B. Experienced high-end art thief Nemo arrives at the scene of his next big heist, the Manhattan penthouse apartment of a wealthy art collector. He descends onto the rooftop patio and enters the apartment through the sliding glass door with some help from his hacker, a voice on the radio who he calls only by the code name number three. The hacker tells Nemo that he needs to deactivate the security system. He enters the code just in time, successfully disarming the system, but only for a few minutes. Nemo sets a timer on his watch for seven minutes and begins to hurry around the apartment looking for his target items. He spots two of the paintings hung on the wall upstairs, carefully stowing them away in white bags. Placing the bags at the front door, he heads into the master bedroom for the last piece of art, but finds a different painting there than the self-portrait that he's looking for. Nemo calls up number three on the radio to explain what's going on, but the hacker says that the painting must be somewhere and orders him to keep searching around until he finds it. With only four minutes left to go, the self-portrait that he's looking for is still nowhere in sight, and he needs to take whatever he has and get out of there before it's too late. Now, before we get too far here, we wanted to quickly check in with some of our friends over at the How to Beat video. If you want to look like the cool protagonist from your favorite horror movie, we suggest the official uniform of How to Beat video employees. These are the only shirts in the market specifically designed for signaling to the world you give great movie recommendations and are tailor-made for fending off the following. Serial killers, axe murderers, werewolves, death games of all shapes and sizes, fast zombies, slow zombies, medium fast zombies, sexy vampires, ugly vampires, giant spiders, goblins, ghouls, ghosts, and gremlins. Aside from their unique defensive properties, they also just look really cool. So whether you're a video store employee or just someone who wants the world to know you're having a damn good day, head on over to the link in the description and order your apparel today. Nemo goes back to the control panel by the front door, and number three reads him the code to reactivate the security system. He enters the numbers, but that was his biggest mistake. A loud alarm and flashing lights start going off, and the back door that he entered through slides shut, sealing him in the apartment. Nemo rushes for the back door, but realizes quickly that he can't get it open. He picks up a heavy stone sculpture and tries to smash the window open, but the glass is too thick to break. So he heads back to the front door to try and find find another way out. But no matter what he does, he can't get it to open. Desperate, he asks number three what he should do, but the hacker tells him that he's on his own. Nemo takes the control panel off the wall and cuts the wire, getting its robotic voice to stop but damaging the system in the process. As the alarm continues to blare, he wads up some paper towels and stuffs them in his ear, blocking out the noise so that he can think for a moment about what to do next. He goes around the apartment and kicks down all of the flashing lights, before using some nearby furniture to reach up high on the wall and cut the wires to the speakers, finally getting the alarm to stop and sitting down to catch his breath. He goes back to the main door and feels around its carved wooden surface for a weak point. He takes out his pocket knife and jams it into the wood, clipping away at it piece by piece. As he stops for a break, he reaches up towards the vents in the ceiling and notices that the heat has been turned on due to the damaged control panel. Thirsty, he goes to the kitchen sink and turns on the faucet, but finds out that the water has been turned off. He tries turning on the stove, but realizes that the gas is off as well. After a moment, he opens up the refrigerator to find something to eat, but inside, all he finds is gross, moldy old food. He grabs the only bit of water that he can find and guzzles it down in a few gulps. Nemo goes back to work, chipping away at the front door as the temperature inside the apartment rises to nearly 90 degrees Fahrenheit. With the beads of sweat pouring down the back of his neck, he finally breaks through the wood surface, only to realize that the door is reinforced with a sheet of solid steel. Frustrated, he slams his fist into the control panel and storms away. Night falls, and Nemo lays in the middle of the room trying to desperately get number three on the radio. He calls out to him over and over again, but finally gives up when he 
gets no response. Going back to the fridge, Nemo takes a swig off of a bottle of vodka and grabs some of the moldy food. He sits on the couch and scrapes the mold off of some of the slices of meat, making himself a rancid little snack. Flipping through the channels on the television, he eventually finds one that shows the feed from every security camera in the building. Nemo sits back and watches the guard at the front desk, wondering what he should do before climbing into one of the beds to go to sleep. Okay, before we start to come up with a plan, let's take a minute to review what Nemo's up against so far. Nemo entered the apartment via helicopter through an outdoor patio on the building's roof. But when he reactivated the security system, the sliding door that he came in through closed and sealed him in. The only other way out of the apartment is through the front door, but it seems to be sealed with an electric lock that must be connected to the damaged security system. With his only two exits sealed off, Nemo's stranded in there with no obvious way out, and he's going to have to get creative if he wants to escape. Nemo was quickly abandoned by his team, leaving him to fend for himself. His accomplice number three can't do much to help him, since calling the police or even the front desk security of the building is totally out of the question. He doesn't want to get out of this apartment only to end up in prison, so he's extremely limited with who he can try to contact for help. He managed to get the alarm and flashing lights to stop, but in the process he damaged the security system and caused the apartment's heat to turn on with no way to shut it off. This is obviously going to be a problem, because if the temperature in there keeps rising, it will only be a matter of time before he starts to suffer from heat-related illnesses. Overexposure to extremely high temperatures can cause cramps, dizziness, fainting, and in the worst cases will eventually lead to heat stroke. In case you're watching from somewhere where it's cold year-round, heat stroke occurs when your internal body temperature reaches over 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the outside temperatures reach 90 degrees Fahrenheit, heat stroke becomes a threat to anyone who's exposed for long. And in this sealed apartment with the system constantly pumping in more heat, it's going to get dangerous fast. And more than half of the most severe cases of heat stroke end up fatal even with medical treatment. This means that if Nemo can't shut off the system, he's gonna need to make sure that he stays cool while he figures out how he's going to escape. He's also gonna need to get creative if he wants to stay hydrated. In normal conditions, a person can only go without drinking water for about three days. But with heat stroke bearing down on him, Nemo's going to have even less time to survive. So now that we know where he stands, Nemo has three goals to accomplish. He needs to keep himself cool, find some drinkable water, and finally figure out a way to make his escape. He could try shutting or blocking any of the vents that he's able to reach. He should also try to take breaks as often as he can while he's chipping away at the door, and use the place's indoor pool or stick his head in the freezer when he needs to cool himself off. To keep himself hydrated, he's going to need clean drinking water. But the water line to the house has been shut off since the owner is gone for an extended trip. The pool and the fish tank water aren't going to work since they're full of chemicals and bacteria that will make him sick. As he entered the apartment, Nemo passed by what looked like an indoor garden. If those plants are real, then they'll need water in order to survive meaning that there would have to be some kind of built-in sprinkler system. If he were able to collect some water from there, then it should be safe enough for him to drink. His only options right now are to ration whatever water he can find in the refrigerator. But instead of thinking about the realities of long-term survival in this place, Nemo decides to guzzle it all down in one shot. Once he's sure he's figured out how to avoid dying from heat stroke or dehydration, he can start to work on the ultimate goal, getting out of there without being caught. But this whole situation could have been easily avoided if he just used something heavy to block open the sliding door that he entered through at the very beginning. Since he needed his hacker to open the door remotely, it was always possible that it could have shut at any moment and seal him in. As a professional art thief, he should have made sure that his exit plan was flawless before worrying about anything else. Since he didn't account for the possibility of the door closing on its own, he ends up trapped in the apartment with only two options for escape somehow breaking the thick glass windows or getting out through the front door. Windows in high-rise buildings like this one are usually made of strong, heat-treated glass that is designed to be very difficult to break. However, it's still possible to get the glass to shatter if enough damage is caused to its outer edge. Nemo could find a pointed metal object like a kitchen utensil or small sculpture from somewhere inside the house and desperately target the weakest points on the glass door to the patio. This would only get him as far as the roof though, and without his friends in the helicopter to pick him up, Nemo wouldn't be able to get very far from there. 
It would be extremely strange if the only way to open it from the inside is by using the electrical control panel. In the event of a power outage or a security system malfunction, this would leave the owner stranded in his apartment with no way to get out. It would only make sense that there must be some way to manually release the lock from inside. If the door is reinforced with a sheet of steel and sealed by the electrical lock with no manual override, then getting out that way isn't going to work either, and Nemo's chances of escape are looking slim. The next morning, Nemo hears a helicopter flying outside. He runs to the window to look, but the chopper passes by without noticing him. Inside, the temperature rises to over 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Nemo goes to the apartment's indoor pool and cools himself off. He tries calling out to number three for help once again, but gets no response. Nemo goes to the phone and tries to call out, but quickly realizes that the line is dead. Searching around the art collector's office, he comes across his desk where he finds a calendar, showing that the man won't be back from his business trip in Kazakhstan for a very long time. He tries the computer, but it's also been disconnected from the internet. Nemo goes to the master bedroom and bangs at several spots on the long glass window, desperately searching for any weakness. Looking around the room, he finds some moldy oranges on the dresser. Banging them together, he sees that they're actually heavy billiard ball-like sculptures. Grabbing one, he walks to the center of the room and chucks it as hard as he can at the window, but he still can't get the glass to break, and sits down on a nearby table to come up with a new strategy. Looking around the room, Nemo suddenly notices the massive skylight in the ceiling, and decides that if he can get to it, he might just be able to escape. He begins by dragging more furniture across the room, slowly constructing a massive tower and using the heaviest objects as its base. Across the room, he finally notices the small indoor garden of live plants with a built-in irrigation system. Nemo crawls through the dirt until he finds the buried hose and removes the cap to try to access the water inside. Desperate for a drink, he turns his attention to the nearby fish tank. He dips a finger in and tests the water out, but it's obviously disgusting and dangerous to consume, and Nemo glares at the fish inside, jealous of its hydration. He tries the bathroom sinks and even the toilet, but there's no running water at all. Finally, he finds an ice cube tray in the freezer and devours the whole thing, rubbing the ice on his lips and licking up every last drop off the countertop. Nemo goes back to constructing his escape tower and takes apart straps of some cloth from a couple of chairs, using it as a way to reinforce the structure. The tower is now a good 16 feet tall and Nemo carefully starts climbing his way up, but the skylight is still far out of reach. Nemo stares out into the city lights, getting ready to spend another evening in this unlikely prison. Okay, Nemo made some interesting progress today, but the hard truth is that he's still not in a much better position than he was the day before. The temperature in the apartment is still on the rise, and it's clear that Nemo is beginning to lose his mind from the heat. He uses the pool to cool himself off, and he finds some ice to hydrate himself in the freezer. But his resources are running thin, and heatstroke continues to be a very real threat. He has no phone or internet connection, and his team has stopped answering his radio calls, leaving him with no way to contact help. He tries to throw the orange sculptures through the window, but ends up just tiring himself out, and that's when he notices the skylight. Unable to get through the front door or the back patio, he decides to construct a tower to the skylight and try to escape through it, which is better than nothing, but I must say that I'm doubtful of this plan. If he does manage to get up there and break through the glass, he'll still just be stuck on the roof with no way to get down. He should still have his repelling gear, but it's nowhere near enough to get him down from the roof of a skyscraper. Although maybe if he can get outside, he can repel down to a window or balcony on the level just below him, escaping from one of the lower floors. It's a sketchy plan at best, but at least he has plenty of time to work on it, and we'll have to see how it plays out. The next morning, Nemo quickly gets back to work, drawing blueprints for the tower in his sketchbook. On the television, he notices one of the building's employees eating her lunch in the stairwell. He watches her for a minute, but she packs up her things and goes back to her job. Nemo goes to the computer panel on the wall and notices that the temperature is climbing to over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. He tries to get the system to cool things down, but it's too damaged to work with. Growing Hungry, he rummages through the kitchen searching for a can opener, but can't find one. He flings some utensils into the next room in a moment of rage. Nemo grabs a knife and tries to slice the can open instead, but ends up cutting his hand with the blade. He runs to the sink to wash the wound, but remembers that the water is off and instead dunks his bleeding hand into the pool. He rips part of his shirt and uses the cloth as bandage to wrap it up. 
he opens the freezer and starts licking the condensation from the walls. He scrapes up all of the small pieces of ice and gulps them down, before sitting there for a moment with his head inside the freezer, laughing and crying to himself as his grip on reality starts to slip away. The next morning, Nemo hammers a statue into a locked freezer door in the kitchen and uses it as a wedge to pry it open. Inside, he finds a stash of semi-edible food, along with a few cans of dog food. Suddenly, he hears the sound of running water as the spring sprinklers in the garden finally come to life. Nemo runs out to the garden and throws himself down into the dirt. He lays down in the soil and lets the water run over him, enjoying every second until the sprinklers eventually shut off. Nemo goes back to the main room and pulls down the massive curtains hanging there. Next, he dismantles one of the beds, cutting the straps that holds its frame together to use as reinforcements for his tower. He drags more and more furniture into the main room and works through the day building his structure higher towards the ceiling. Nemo shakes the tower to test its strength. He climbs all the way to the top once again, this time finally able to reach the skylight. He takes his knife from his pocket and tests the glass, but sees that it's reinforced and won't be easy to break. So he climbs down to think over the next steps in his plan. Meanwhile, the control panel shows that the temperature in the apartment is now over 106 degrees Fahrenheit. Through the security camera feed on the television, he notices the employee from before riding in the elevator and draws a picture of her in his book, giving her the name Jasmine. The woman gets off the elevator, and Nemo realizes that she's right outside of the penthouse door. He quickly throws on his clothes and runs to the entrance, calling out for her, but she's using a vacuum and wearing headphones, and the door is much too thick for her to hear through. He desperately knocks on the door and calls for her, but after a moment, she gets back on the elevator and rides it down, probably not to return for several days. Suddenly, the damaged control panel starts pumping cold air into the apartment. Nemo walks up to the vent, feeling the cold coming in, and starts to cry, relieved to finally get a break from the heat, but knowing that slowly freezing to death won't be any better. Exhausted and out of ideas, he lays down on the cold floor to sleep for another night. Okay, just when you think he's getting somewhere, Nemo finds new and creative ways to make the situation even worse for himself. In his rush to get that can open, Nemo sliced his hand open with the knife and added yet another danger to the list of problems, the potential for the wound to become infected. Untreated wounds can lead to cellulitis, which occurs when infection spreads to deeper tissues under the skin. If he leaves it untreated, he'll quickly become sick and develop a fever, which is not something you want to be dealing with while trapped in a sweltering apartment. Nemo dunks his hand into the pool to wash the wound. However, experts say that the chlorine will actually prevent him from building new tissue causing delayed healing and increased risk of infection. Instead, Nemo should have looked around the bathroom for any first aid supplies to properly treat the injury. Finding the food in the locked freezer and seeing the sprinklers turn on in the garden are by far the two biggest things that he's had going for him since he got trapped in there. If properly rationed, that food should keep him going for a long time. And if he comes up with a system to collect the sprinkler water, he'll have a constant source that's safe to drink. With those bases covered, he's bought himself several more weeks to keep working on his tower. He's finally able to reach the skylight, but once he gets there, he finds that the glass is reinforced, just like all of the other windows. This brings me back to my idea from before that he should just find a hard pointed object like a kitchen utensil or the sculpture that he used to break into the fridge and do his best to attack the skylight around its edges where the glass is the weakest. Hopefully he could get the glass to shatter and open up a way for him to get out onto the roof. Like I said before, I'm not exactly sure what he's planning to do once he gets out there, but at least it's a start. While he's taking a break, Nemo notices the maintenance woman in the hall right outside of the door. He tries to shout through at her, but the door is too thick and her headphones and vacuum are too noisy for her to hear. He doesn't have much time during this encounter, but she should be coming back. And maybe if he could chip away at the door revealing more of the steel frame, he could bang against it with something that would make enough noise to catch her attention. If he could somehow get her to hear him, then all he'd have to do is wait for the building managers or police to come and let him out, and hopefully he could fool them with the story that he was just a maintenance man who got trapped inside, and sneak away in the confusion before anyone starts asking too many questions. The hot air may have finally shut off, providing Nemo with a moment of relief. 
but now, instead of heat stroke, he'll have to try and stop himself from freezing to death. Hopefully, he can finish his tower or get someone to hear him before he's turned into a popsicle, but however he does it, he needs to get out there soon. Another night passes, and the control panel shows that the temperature in the apartment has dropped down to a comfortable 77 degrees Fahrenheit. The sprinkler system for the garden comes to life again, but this time Nemo collects all of the water in a bunch of bowls that he's already set up. He uses a strainer to filter out any dirt or stems and gathers all of the clean water into a jug, taking a swig from the bottle and giving his nod of approval. He makes himself a nice meal with the good food from the freezer and enjoys a glass of wine by the side of the pool. Getting back to work, Nemo searches through the owner's closet and finds another locked off area but decides to come back to it later. In the bathroom, he notices a plant in a big glass vase and suddenly is struck with an idea. He picks up the vase and shatters it in the bathtub before collecting two similarly sized pieces. Using the glass, some cloth, and a bit of scotch tape, Nemo fashions himself a pair of goggles and carefully climbs back up to the very top of the tower. He takes some tools that he found in the kitchen and starts to slowly chip away at the frame of the skylight using the goggles to keep the falling dust out of his eyes. After several hours of hard work, Nemo heads to the kitchen and soaks some pasta in a bowl of water, making himself something to eat while pretending to be on a cooking show to pass the time. The computer panel shows that the temperature in the apartment is still dropping. Nemo makes himself a plate of some meat from the freezer and sits down to watch more security camera footage on the television. He starts chipping away at the frame of the skylight again, but realizes with dismay that it's secured on with steel bolts that he doesn't have the proper tool to remove. Night falls again, and Nemo occupies himself by looking through a telescope out at the people of the city. Starting to get very cold, he goes back to the main computer panel and cuts one of the wires. He taps on the screen, but the system still doesn't respond, and there's nothing he can do but bundle up as the temperature continues to drop. Nemo tries one last time to reach someone on his radio, but the battery dies, taking with it his last hope of contacting the outside world. The next morning, Nemo wakes up and notices the sunlight reflecting onto the wall from a broken shard of glass. He picks up the glass and starts playing with the reflected light before drawing a circle on the wall where it hits. Nemo gets back to chipping away at the frame of the skylight as he covers the entire apartment in dust. Finally, all 12 bolts are revealed, but now he has to come up with a way to get them loose. Searching for tools, Nemo decides to break into the locked closet that he came across the day before. Inside, he finds some jackets and puts one on, but notices something suspicious behind the coats. Feeling around on the wall, he pulls back a false panel, revealing a hidden stone passageway. Nemo cautiously creeps in to investigate, and finally finds the missing painting that he was looking for during the original heist. Suddenly, he looks to his his right and sees something that makes him scream and recoil in fear. He runs back to the end of the passageway to collect his thoughts and then decides to double back into the hidden room. Inside, he finds what appears to be an old man's body placed on a strange altar. After a moment, he reaches down and squeezes the body's face, revealing that it's actually just a rubber dummy, and pushing it off of the table. On its chest, he finds a strange manuscript called The Marriage of Heaven and Hell and flips through its pages. He takes the book and the painting from the wall and leaves the mysterious chamber behind. Back in the master bedroom, he takes a closer look at the strange painting on the wall and notices what looks like an image of himself with a forked tongue getting up to some bad shenanigans. Confused, he decides to lay down for the night, but just as he's about to fall asleep, he notices on the security camera that Jasmine is right outside of the apartment door once again. He runs to the door, screaming and slamming on it with a pan, but she still can't hear him since she has her headphones in and the vacuum is running. Nemo tries to slip a note under the door, but it won't fit, and no matter how loud he screams, she can't seem to hear him. He desperately tries to get her attention, but it's no use, and after a moment, she gets on the elevator and rides it back downstairs. Defeated, Nemo falls into a pile of blankets on the floor and goes to sleep. Okay, now things are getting really interesting. Nemo's showing off a couple of impressive ideas when it comes to survival and escape as he continues working on the tower and uncovering more secret areas of the house. Putting the bowls under the sprinklers was a great idea. That way he'll have access to clean drinking water on a regular basis. If he rations it properly, he should have no problem keeping himself hydrated and avoiding the health risks that come with a lack of water. 
Making goggles out of the broken glass vase was another very wise move and should help to keep the dust and debris out of his eyes as he continues chipping away at the skylight. Unfortunately, it's soon revealed that the glass is held into its frame by several thick metal bolts. Although this is definitely an annoying factor, he's come too far to give up now and he's going to need to find out a way to get those bolts off so that he can escape. Most homeowners should have a socket wrench laying around somewhere, so my first instinct would be to search through the drawers and closets for a toolbox. If that fails, there's always the option of trying to create a tool out of some of the stuff he finds around the house. With so many art pieces around, there is bound to be something that he can use to get those bolts out if he thinks creatively. When Nemo found that hidden passageway in the closet, I thought for sure he was going to encounter some sort of genetic abomination or dark family secret, but it turned out to just be a hiding place for the self-portrait he was looking for, and some kind of rubber dummy of an unidentified guy? I have to say, that tunnel really got my hopes up that he was about to uncover something crazy, or at least something that would have given him more inspiration for how to escape, but no such luck. His best bet still seems to be escaping through the skylight until Jasmine shows up outside the front door once again. If Nemo had chipped away at more of the wood on the door like I mentioned before, he might have been able to bang on the steel and make enough noise to get her to notice him. However, since he hadn't done anything different from the last time she came up, I don't know what he expected to happen. Jasmine probably won't be coming back for another few days, so all that's left for him to do is keep working on the skylight plan. He's got enough food and water to keep going for a little while, but if escaping via the skylight isn't working out and supplies start to run low, he'll have to come up with some other way to get out before this apartment goes from his prison to his tomb. The next morning, Nemo kicks apart a chair and carves into the leg, creating a makeshift tool to try and remove the skylight bolts. He hammers the board onto the bolt and gives it a turn, but the wood splinters from the pressure and breaks in half. Nemo builds himself another tool and goes back to work, this time finally managing to get the first bolt off before that tool also breaks. He goes through tool after tool, slowly making progress on the bolts, but quickly losing what little grip on reality he has left. During his breaks from working on the skylight, he uses a strainer to catch a fish out of the tank and lets it slowly die on the apartment floor. He takes the fish into the kitchen and chops it up with a knife, rolling it into a sort of sushi meal that he almost vomits up as soon as he takes a bite. He also begins drawing strange images all over the bedroom wall, falling further into insanity the more that time passes. Days go by, and on one occasion he notices Jasmine staring right at the security camera, convincing himself that she can somehow see him through it. He manages to get a few more of the bolts off with each day and places them on some sort of weird shrine that he constructed in the bedroom. To make matters worse, the temperature in the apartment starts to rise again, climbing above 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Running out of things to eat, Nemo makes himself a nasty bowl of dog food as a last resort. He sits on the bedroom floor and wears one of the art pieces as a strange shamanic outfit, repeating to himself over and over again in a hoarse voice that he has no energy and he's dying before laying down to take another nap. Sometime later, he goes to a painting of a man taped up to a wall and pushes it down. He gets back to work and removes another bolt from the skylight, but stumbles backwards and accidentally falls from the top of the tower all the way down to the floor. Writhing in pain, Nemo takes a look at his leg and realizes it's badly injured. That night, Nemo scrapes up the last bits from a jar of jam while he watches fireworks through the window. Suddenly, Jasmine appears in the apartment standing silently behind him. She approaches Nemo and kneels down on the floor in front of him, leaning in for a kiss but never making contact. She reaches out and feels around his face without ever physically touching him before backing away and disappearing into the darkness, seemingly a hallucination produced by his exhausted mind. The next morning, Nemo adds a watch to his weird shrine. With his leg now in a splint, he limps towards the bathroom sink and disinfects a big sewing needle with some alcohol. Taking the needle, he tries to stitch up his busted lip, but the art collector suddenly appears behind him and bashes his head into the countertop, knocking him unconscious. Nemo wakes up on the floor bleeding from his nose and head. He stares up at the ceiling and that's when he notices the smoke alarm, giving him one last idea. Nemo tears up some pieces of paper and places them in a ceramic bowl, then takes a magnifying glass and lights the pieces on fire using the rays of the sun. Once the fire is going strong, he takes a board with a cloth wrapped around the end and douses it with alcohol before holding it over the fire and creating a makeshift torch. He staggers into the bathroom and climbs onto the sink, holding the torch under the alarm until it triggers, setting off the sprinklers all over the apartment. Nemo goes to the front door and starts to scream 
for help, but still nobody comes. He tries to check the security camera, but the television shorts out as the apartment becomes totally flooded with water. Broken by this defeat, Nemo takes shelter under the stairs until the sprinklers finally shut off. Okay, it looks like we're reaching the end of the line with our friend Nemo. So let's take a moment to review where we're at and any last ditch plans that he could still try. Nemo's running out of things to eat and tries to make some sushi out of one of the art collector's pets. I guess he forgot that fish are friends, not food. The fish looks like it was about as nasty to eat as you would expect and the dog food isn't any better as an alternative. He's out of supplies and out of time and if he's going to escape, it looks like it's now or never. Creating a tool out of the chair leg was a great idea, and once he gets a good method down, he's actually able to remove almost all of the bolts. Due to exhaustion and delirium from having nothing to eat, he takes a big spill from the top of the tower, injuring his leg, but luckily, surviving the fall. Nemo starts to experience hallucinations, and seems to be on the verge of completely losing his mind, meaning that whatever time he has left is about to run out. Desperate, he turns to his last unexplored option, starting a fire in the apartment and hoping that emergency responders get there in time to get him out. From the beginning, I've had two ideas for how to escape that I wouldn't have wanted to use because of the fact that he also wants to avoid getting arrested by the police. The first thing that came to mind was exactly what he ended up doing, starting a fire using the sunlight coming through the window. Remarkably, no one responds to the fire alarms, and the massive flooding doesn't seem to bother the neighbors on the floor below enough for them to make a call. So I guess that plan was never going to work. Speaking of a lack of response, what kind of security system does this art collector have that can remotely lock doors and activate lights and sirens, but doesn't contact the police when there's an intruder? It's like this place was specifically set up to trap robbers in side, but it's no use overthinking that now. The only other idea that Nemo hasn't tried yet is to just make a big sign that says please help me on the windows, and hope that somebody from one of the nearby towers notices it. There are plenty of canvases and art supplies around, and if he's desperate enough to escape, then this could definitely be a way to get attention from the outside world. Sometime later, snow falls outside while Nemo sits in the dark reading passages from the strange book that he found in the hidden room. Outside on the patio, he hallucinates that the art collector's daughter and dog are watching him through the window. With a new tool to remove the bolts in his hand, Nemo staggers towards his little shrine, raising his hands in front of his strange drawing before finally stopping to catch his breath. Nemo goes to the front hall and writes a message on the wall, thanking the art collector for letting him stay at his place, but saying for him that it was more of a cage than a home. He apologizes for destroying the apartment, but says that maybe it needed to be destroyed, because there can be no creation without destruction. He ascends the tower. The skylight is finally opened, but we're left to wonder if he actually made it out, or if he finally fell victim to the madness of such extreme isolation. But what would you do? If you were in that situation, what would you do that Nemo didn't get around to? Also, what an ending, right? What do you think happened there? I have an idea, but I want to hear what you think. Let us know in the comments down below. Leave a like and subscribe, and check out the How To Beat playlist for more videos just like this. And don't forget from now on, we'll be uploading on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Until next time, have a damn good day.